Hey folks, thanks for tuning in. Please join us over at rivianstories.com for all the latest Rivian news. Maybe pick up yourself a t-shirt while you're there. Thanks. Speaking of heat and cool and HVAC and power, let's switch that over. That's a great cue to this whole story here. Your Rivian can power your home with an upcoming software update. The R1T and R1S already have the hardware needed for two-way charging. All that's left is software. Have you guys read this one yet? And what do you know? What can you tell me? So I haven't read that one specifically yet. Mm -hmm. I know going all the way back to when Bruce, John, Kendra, and everyone was yep. part of the Lucky 10. RJ the Chosen mentioned. 10. Yep, the Chosen 10. Um, yeah, he mentioned it then. But I do know um long way up, unless that version of the truck, obviously, there that was a different version of the truck that we have now, a very close version, but a different version nonetheless. Um, there was some hardware that was different as well. That was you know, that was not in the vehicle. So mm -hmm. I'm curious if that made it in the truck and we just don't know it. And it was never talked about in any of the Monroe breakdowns. Um so if we are just truly a software update away from vehicle to a grid or vehicle to home, that's cool. Uh, mm -hmm. And it's it, cool to know that all of the vehicles that are currently on the road right now, they're all going to have that capability. It is way more complicated than that. And not only is there the vehicle side which there is a a standard that is not completely finalized yet. Um, I think it's ISO 15118-20 for the communications and some of the specifications around vehicle to home, vehicle to grid. But there's also the home side of the equation which is going to be a significant investment for anybody to actually do this once the Rivian is software enabled to do so. And matter of fact, I saw an article um, not too long ago where the Ford F-150 Lightning has really promoted that capability since day one. And there was an article where it was like, hey, it's going to cost 18 grand for the mm. home side of the equipment and labor to enable my vehicle to power my home. So it it is more complicated. There's There's more to it. It's not like a magical software update and your home is powered by your Rivian. Oh, sh but... So you're talking about this more complicated, I mean, it's, it's outside of your Rivian, it's more complicated. Yes. There's a number of pieces. Yeah. yeah. Right. 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 And yeah, I'm not, yeah, I wouldn't even, I wouldn't even talk about that. I was just talking about like, you do remember from long way up when they were, when they were powering, for instance, going vehicle to vehicle. I mean, there was a, there was a whole box that they had plugged into to go from the one one Rivian to the other in order to charge. Well, they were charging the, the bikes. Or, or in order yeah. to charge the Harley. Say what? Or to charge the bikes, whatever it was. Yep. I can't remember. I haven't gone back and watched it in a few years now, but. Those were Rivian e-bikes. <laughs> I just didn't know it. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, I, I mean, I, I can't. 18 grand, though, that seems, that seems awfully chunky for... Um, Essentially a transfer switch. What's the terminology for like your your panel that's got all of your your wants, needs, and desires? Um so as a lot far of as the what time, you want to be able to power. Yeah. In, in there's, yeah, there's gonna be a critical load panel a lot of the time. Thank you. There's that one. There's going to be an inverter. And then there's obviously the equipment that um connects to the vehicle right so and yeah. which by the way uses the dc pins uses dc power out Correct. of the vehicle battery so it's the same type of connector that 
that you see at fast charging stations. So it's not just the J1772 that we've got with our Rivian EVSEs. So I'm uh, going to ask this question, and maybe you can answer this, Skylar or Kyle, or the audience can answer. Uh, How is Kia getting away with their connector that goes CCS style plug to, say, the EV6 to a 110? to be able to run some of the stuff that they're showing, that they're being able to run. So that's that's their vehicle to load. And I'm I'm not sure what kind of connector that is, honestly. Um, yeah. I have no idea. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, I, I feel like, um, one, the current Rivian charger is not going to work. That, that it'll be a, it'll be a completely new EVSE that will... I would assume have a lot of that already built into it. I wish I knew more than what people think we knew. Yeah. Well, but bottom line, what we're telling people is that the R1 side might be a software update, but there's this whole other side to actually make it work, to actually get right. power into your home. Yeah. Right. So just just know that up front. <laughs> yeah. Which is fair. Uh, this and is a curveball because, yeah, go ahead. I was just going to say to kind of wrap it up, though, I'm extremely mm-hmm. bullish in general on vehicle to home and vehicle to grid technology and capabilities in general. I think that, mm-hmm. you know, a lot of non EV people out there talk about how. EVs are going to crash the grid, destabilize the grid, but I feel like the the opposite is actually true and that mm-hmm. distributed energy storage including potentially, you know, the battery in your EV here in 5 years, 10 years is going to be a huge component of grid stability. So Mm-hmm. I, I, I can't wait until we're seeing more and more adoption. I love that, Skylar. Thanks for saying that, too, because I hear that some from people around here. Like, where are you going to charge that in a few years when, you know, no one can charge? Because it's well, and I'm like, oh, my gosh. Like, um, totally agree that it's going to be more of a solution than a problem as far as being able to store energy in lots of places. Uh, I think this is a great topic for us to actually do a little bit of research and come back and talk about EVs. Will they crash the grid? How are we going to scale? Like, so let's do that at some point. Subscribe. We'll come back around, send us some stuff and some insight that you have on this. Uh, maybe over at rivianstories.com or something like that. So let's do that. Another thing I want to do as a future is I just came across this article pressing the back button. No, it's still cheaper to drive 100 miles in an electric car. I want to talk about this sometime soon. Not now. But I want to come back and say, how much does it cost to drive 100 miles in an R1? Which is a little bit different. And the reason is, is because sometimes I've been looking at all my stuff. I'm like, man, this is much more expensive than I thought it'd be. Why is this? Well, part of it is this cold. We got a lot of wind. So my efficiency is trash right now. Um, so that comes into it. I also have been doing a little bit more kind of level two, level three charging out on the road, which is more expensive than home. But I want to come back around to this sometime because this is all based on three miles per kilowatt hour. And that could just be an easy way to do it. Like I'm getting nowhere near three. Like if I'm more like 1.5 right now, you could see maybe I'm, I'm pretty close to Iowa here. So maybe double that. I'm like eight bucks to go a hundred miles. You know what I mean? But I want to come back to that. We'll just we'll just cliffhanger that one. All right. We got to come back to that. Because what I'd want to end on now in our last few minutes together is just talk about service um, as R1 owners as we are. All right. That's all for this one. We have more coming. So please subscribe. In the meantime, we hang out at rivianstories.com. Click on shop. Find yourself a T-shirt. Thanks so much for your support.